Coming up on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, the Cougars head coach reflects on a rocky top revival. And the guy who made the play that kept hope alive will join us live in Studio C as BYU Football with Kalani Sitake starts now. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. All right. Good evening, Cougar Nation. Welcome back inside Studio C at the BYU Broadcasting Building in Provo for another weekly edition of the Satake Show. Great crowd on hand tonight. As always, uh, you can always join the online conversation by submitting questions for tonight's guests on Twitter using hashtag Satake Show, as well as Facebook and Instagram on the BYU TV sports accounts. Well, coming up on this evening's show, Coach Satake recaps Saturday night's wild win in Knoxville. We go inside the film room with safeties coach Preston Hadley. We get mic'd up with running backs coach A.J. Stewart, and we get mic'd up with uh, wide receiver Micah Simon joining us in studio. And to get tonight's show on the road, please say hello to the former fullback, the man who took one for the team and ended up in a walking boot Saturday night as a result. He's the head coach of your BYU Cougars, Kalani Sitake. I'll come say hi to you guys. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So right before you came on, uh, I was just talking to the crowd a little bit, and I wondered how many uh, fans that are in this studio tonight were with you in Knoxville. And by by, by round of applause, who was in Knoxville on Saturday night? <laughs> so yeah, I recognize all of you. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great environment. And, you know, every win is going to be great no matter how you get it. But that was a really special feeling evening out there in Tennessee. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And... Uh... You know, it feels even better coming away with the win, but um, I thought the whole environment, the hospitality that, that we had and from the Knoxville area and the people in that area were awesome. So, And it was good to see a lot of uh, royal blue out there. They're, they're all over the place. There's two big sections, and then they're kind of sp- splattered out throughout the, the orange out there, and it was just nice to see them. And um, our players are really thankful that they were there and making a lot of noise. What kind of feedback were you and your staff and others getting from the people in the Tennessee area about what BYU brought to the building that night. Oh yeah, they were impressive. I'm impressed by all of it, and, and uh, you know, from the um, hotel personnel to the to the, the people that did our police escort, they just said they'd never been around a, a program like this with the fans and with the players and everyone involved. So, uh, congratulations for you know having a great impression out in, in the South. And, and uh, um, there's a lot of stuff that's going around in social media on how great our fans are. And, uh, I've been saying that for a long time, so I'm glad everyone's starting to figure that out as well. All right, let's take a nice uh, long look back at what went down in Knoxville on a warm summer night there in the south, BYU and Tennessee. And uh, this was a game that, uh, again, kind of had that feel of, okay, slugfest. Not a lot of points, especially in the first half. And, I mean, what a a fluky way for it to get underway for Tennessee there. Kaviko Fonua makes a good play, but bounces right into the hands of Juwan Jennings. You're down 7-zip. Yeah, and that was a long drive at the beginning, you know, and um, it was – we knew it was going to be a tough game, and, and Tennessee was going to be, you know, fired up to play this game, and especially after the result against Georgia State. And um, you know, we felt like we were going to get their best shot, and we started to feel it right at the beginning. BYU did score in the first quarter. That uh, flea flicker to Bushman set up that Jay Goldroyd field goal. It was a 7-3 heading into the uh, second quarter of play. So BYU did get on the board in the first 15. And, and the, one of the good things about this game, Kalani, is things never really got away from you, right? I think Tennessee played maybe a little better in the first half offensively than they did in the second half when you held them down. But things never really ran away from you. Yeah, we gave up a lot of yards on defense. We had some issues with the run fits. And, um, you know, like I said before, Tennessee made some plays. But I... I was just really thankful that our guys, the effort was there. Our guys ran hard. You see Diane uh, forcing the play out. I mean, that's when you have all 11 guys running to the ball, I think good things happen and we can never be able to cover up for mistakes. And we made a lot of those, you know, but um, there's Kavika getting some payback for the first, for the first uh, touchdown. And um, he's going to be in the right spot. We felt good about the way he, he drops in zone coverage and, and uh, you know, just really happy. <laughs> Kind of, uh, that play helped change the game because you get your first touchdown a few plays later, courtesy of Tyson Williams, who has run on this field before uh, in the SEC. Yeah, and he's um, you know the one thing that I'll have to say is that he'll see he'll be the first to admit that our receivers block 
and did an amazing job downfield blocking and, and you saw Micah doing it there. You see Talon and the rest of the crew block well. So it was really good. It worked out well for us. BYU did a nice job of keeping Tennessee two field goals instead of touchdowns. And then there was an exchange of field goals as this game got late. Huge play on a fourth and one. And you guys were great on fourth downs. Third downs too, but fourth downs especially. Yeah, I believe it was one for three and the one was the, the tip pass, right? So yeah. um, I thought... I, I love the way that, you know, you see Max Tooley running there and Isaiah able to make the tackle. And, uh, you know, we're lu- lucky to get him down, especially being a fourth and short situation. Everything came down to this on a third down and six with seconds ticking away. Wilson to Simon and puts you in position for, uh, for Jake to make. Yeah, and I think that that's, um, you know, uh, we kind of saw that a little bit earlier. Didn't have enough time, and, and I'm thankful that we were able to get some pass, pass protection to let Zach be able to throw that ball to Mike who got open. And that one squeaked through. So. Yeah. <laughs> that makes it look very, very tight. Oh, maybe tight. nervous, yeah, because yeah. I thought it missed. The fans behind the Tennessee fans were, were saying that it missed, but there was, was one BYU fan that said it was good. So, yeah, I was, so that's all you need. Yeah. 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 I trust him more than the rest. <laughs> you got the ball first on offense. So the Italian Shumway touchdown for his only catch. Tennessee does respond. There's Jennings again. Had a heck of a night for, for Tennessee. And so we're going to double OT. In the second OT, Tennessee now on offense first. And BYU does a good job of keeping the balls to only a field goal try. Yeah, I was, I was really pleased with the defense. They, they were able to bend a little bit but not break. And uh, being able to hold them to a field goal is huge so we can get this play and, and win the game with the and touchdown. Here it is. Yeah. You know, when you're in the SEC, here, here we go, and you're, you're, you're a little bit hobbled, and we'll get, and, and the headset was hobbled as well after wow. that. Uh, we're going to get to this uh, uh, injury that you may have suffered here in a little bit, but uh, we don't need to talk about it. <laughs> in the SEC, every team they're going to recruit significantly, you know, uh, uh, highly touted talent, especially on the lines, right? You 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 pushed back an SEC line and others into the end zone there to end that game. It had to feel really satisfying. Yeah, and it felt good with our guys that were able to compete with uh, you know, the front when we went to Wisconsin last year and be able to do that against Tennessee, an SEC team that uh, you know that that's played a lot of games last year, made some, had some big wins, and so uh, this was an, uh, a great effort by all three phases on our team, and uh, I was really happy with the way the coaches got the, the guys prepared, and just thankful that our guys won. I believe they won this game on effort and belief, and and uh, they they trusted the preparation. Obviously, we made some mistakes, and we'd like to score more points, and and stop them from scoring, but um, uh, not bad for, for uh, being on the road and, and, and playing in, in SEC country. So I'm, I'm just happy we got the win. Now we got to improve on it. Right. One and one after two games and uh, looking for more. The coordinators uh, give us players of the week in each of their units. We're going to look at those right now. Uh, offense, defense, and special teams players of the week. Micah Simon is the offensive player of the week. Uh, Kavika Fonu, who had that game turning INT on defense. And then Jake Oldroyd, who is still a perfect on the year with his kicks, and he's been a great punter for you as well. So those are the three players of the week, and each of them, along with each of the different units, had, had an equal hand in, in what you got done on, on Saturday night. Yeah, and there's a lot of guys that made plays and, and gave us a chance to win the game, and a lot of unsung heroes that you're probably not going to see on the stat sheet. Uh, but those three did an amazing job for us, and um, you know, if Jake wouldn't be able to do it if the guys didn't protect on the PAT field goal for him. And if we didn't have the snap by Mitch and the hold by Hayden. So it all works out. And, and uh, uh, you know, these guys can just share the, the win. And they're all players of the game to me. And it was a, uh, it was a turnover-free night as well for you. Uh, you had some turnover trouble in the opener. Uh, fixed it and played clean on Saturday night in Knoxville. And uh, you don't need me to tell you that you're a really good football team when you're not turning the ball over. Uh, since you've been the head coach, uh, BYU is now 8-1 uh, with zero turnovers. Yeah, so we should probably not do that and not turn the <laughs> ball over anymore. And... and um, Gain turnovers on defense. You know what? I think the emphasis on ball security has been there from the from the beginning. You know, our guys have been. Uh, you, you even saw when Mike was getting tackled how he had the ball secured, and so uh, that's something that's in, that's ingrained in our guys. And I thought Zach made some wise decisions. There are times that, that I think he could have he was going to try to throw it, but instead took a sack. And that's okay when you have a a punter that can flip the field and can pin him deep, and and we'll get the ball back to him. So uh, just a great team effort, and the guys just trusting each other. You know, and. We're talking about Zach, I'd like to see him just throw the ball away so he doesn't take as many hits. But um, at the same time, he can scramble, he can run, and, and uh, we just want our guys to be aggressive but mindful of the football and protect it when they carry it. 
The attendance Saturday night at Neyland Stadium, officially 92,475, makes it the fifth largest crowd ever to see a BYU game. And of that uh, large number of fans, uh, easily more than 10,000 uh, were in BYU Blue, as you already talked about. One big group down low, one big group way up high, and then Blue kind of in pockets at other places around the stadium. You said there were enough BYU fans that you guys had to sing the fight song twice after the game. Yeah, that's right. And, and you saw the, um, the splattered Blue try to get to one of those two spots, right? And uh, most of them actually gathered down on the bottom because I wouldn't walk up, up top to either. But it was really cool. And... Uh, our, our players are so excited to see them out there, and, and it, it, it felt they were loud and felt like a home game, so um, just a lot of fun. You're walking well today, but Saturday night you were limping around a little <laughs> bit, okay? Uh, on Micah Simon's uh, big catch, and everyone's kind of, you know, kind of racing down the sideline with him, you might have got rolled up a little bit there, and then you might have been dancing around a little bit. Did you, did you get dinged up a little bit? Yeah, so I, I did. Say- I twisted my ankle, but, I mean, you don't have to show it, but the uh, <laughs> I was running it. Everyone's going to remember the, that play by Micah, but I... I actually, that's where I remember the injury. So I ran down and I stepped on, I think, was someone else's headphone um, um, box. And so, and that tweaked my ankle. And, and uh, yeah, so this, it's the, <laughs> it's the fat one, but it's okay. <laughs> but it'll be fine. And it felt great. I, the adrenaline was fine. And then I think uh, when I jumped to celebrate, I felt it a little bit there and, and got mad and just threw the head, headphones. And I'll probably have to buy a new one. I'll, that's okay. <laughs> It was worth it, though, but it was a lot of fun and just, um, yeah, I, my dance moves were never going to be any good anyways, but now, now I have an excuse. <laughs> Speaking of dance, we might see a couple later in the show. Oh, just a it, spo- spo- spoiler alert. Uh, for your day-to-day Cougar it's Sports... not approved by me. Just <laughs> for your day-to-day Cougar Sports play-by-play, watch BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Riley Nelson joins the guys tomorrow. Riley got his first win as a broadcaster Saturday night. When we come back, we go inside the film room. We get defensive with safety's coach, Preston Hadley. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare. Healing for life. That was all of us on Saturday night. So we are back with more BYU football with Kalani Sitake. Uh, this weekend it is BYU and 24th ranked USC. Here's how you can watch and listen to it all. Saturday game day coverage on BYU Radio starts with Cougar pregame live at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 Pacific. Uh, BYU TV's countdown to kickoff is an hour later with the game then on ABC Television and BYU Radio. And then postgame coverage on BYU TV and BYU Radio afterward. Well, each week here on the Sitake Show, we uh, give you access to an assistant coach who highlights a few great plays from the previous game with our own Jerem Jordan. This week, it's safeties coach Preston Hadley, the man in the know with our X's and O's as we go inside the film room. All right, welcome to the film room this week. Safeties coach Preston Hadley. Preston, how you doing, man? Doing well. Always good to come off a win. Always good. Let's break down some film. Uh, safety play was spectacular in this one especially from austin lee but the first drive almost an interception let's break down some film so here in this call uh we're getting spread doubles from the offense and so we knew going into this game uh once they get into the high red zone right here uh, all go was one of their favorite concepts so right here uh we're playing our drop eight coverage so if you watch the free safety right here this is sawyer uh, he does a really good job of reading the quarterback's eyes. And you can see the quarterback staring down the bender right here to the tight end, and he ends up in a good spot. If we just go to the back view, you can see, again, and, and our coaching point for the for the free safety, or whoever our middle of the field safety is, is you want to see the quarterback's face mask and then feel the tip of his shoulder pad. And when those two align, that's when you know. He can only throw the ball where the shoulder pad is, where the, his front shoulder is pointing. Unless it goes no look Mahomes, right? Unless it goes no <laughs> look. Uh, but good luck completing those. Those are cool and stuff. But yeah, I'd Mahomes like to see the Travis I'd like to game. see the the percentage, the completion percentage on those. So right. From right here, you can see the quarterback balls to his ear, pulls the pin on the grenade, and then that's really good by Sawyer. Okay. Next play, Austin Lee on a third down makes a spectacular open field tackle. Yeah, so this this is really nice. So it's third and three. So if you watch Austin right here, this is a really good job. We call the term we use is sheltering, where he's playing it deep. And then when making a when making an open field tackle, all right, this is just our speed and space drill. When he's coming to make an open field tackle, we call it 60-40, where he wants to attack a shoulder, one of the shoulders of the ball carrier, and influence him to go 
opposite. So this is really good by him taking grass, going, coming in 60-40, and making an open field tackle for a loss on a really, really good running back. And then last but not least, uh, Austin Lee again prevents a would-be touchdown in the end zone. Two breakups in the end zone. And, and again, this was, if you look at the situation, it's fourth quarter. We're, we're down three right now, and one of our emphasis this year on defense is just uh, playing great red zone defense. We knew they liked what we call snag or spacing type routes where you get someone attacking the flat, someone attacking the corner, someone settling over the ball. And this is just great preparation from Austin uh, before the game. If you, if you see him pointing, he knows exactly what play is coming. If you watch just the, uh, the switch releases by the two and three, this is really good with their eyes. Both of them should be keying this guy. He'll tell you exactly who you got to cover. And then you get a guy going out, guy going in, Sawyer's all over his with zone backers underneath. And then you got Chaz. Chaz does a great job forcing uh, the quarterback to make a near perfect throw to convert this play. And then a great individual effort right here. Let's see the celebration right here. These things matter. <laughs> and we gotta watch Sawyer. That's a minus for Sawyer all the way. <laughs> that, that golfer's clap does not cut it. You celebrate hard after the game? You, you work hard, you got to play hard. You know, it's uh, winning is, is really hard. And so uh, it's, it's, it's those moments you got to make the most out of. Okay, thanks for breaking it down. Appreciate the time, Preston. Absolutely. All right, thanks to uh, Preston Hadley and uh, Jerem Jordan. Let's look ahead now to a Saturday. And for the first time in 15 years, it's BYU and USC early afternoon kick. ABC's on hand. Trojans looking good to start things out. What a great opportunity for your guys this Saturday. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, they're bringing their air raid offense that, that uh, originated here. So uh, we'll see what it looks like in Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And, uh, you know, they have a lot of tradition and, and a lot of great athletes on their team. So it'll be a great matchup and looking, looking forward to it. He's referenced there on the graphic, but uh, they're coming in with a true freshman quarterback. And since replacing uh, T.J. Daniels, the kid Keaton Slovis has gotten better and better. He was nearly perfect on the weekend against Stanford when uh, USC really put on on him after going down uh, kind of big early. And so uh, what do you think and see from, uh, from Slovis? Well, I think Graham Harrell does a great job at coaching him as the O.C. And Clay Helton has that background as an offensive quarterback coach, so... He's getting really great coaching, and, and he has some great weapons around him. Um, and they, they went against a, a really solid defense like, like Stanford. So uh, the fact that they made some really big plays and got some chunk yardage and put up a lot of points is something that we have to be aware of and we have to be ready for it. But uh, I think we're really excited about the challenge and looking forward to it. And it's a great opportunity for us to go against some great players and see how we match up. Neither Utah nor Tennessee put the ball in the air a ton. I wouldn't be surprised if you see more uh, pass attempts by USC than you've seen in your first two games combined. Yeah, and uh, like I said, we, um, I think we've done a good job defensively at, at probably not at, at getting yards taken care of, but uh, if you're looking at the points um, and, and the amount of points that our, our defense has given up, we probably bend a little bit. And, uh, but there, we're, right now we're in the position where we're going against a, a different type of offense, and so really... Uh, I'm not going to tell you the playbook, but we'll see what happens. You've coached in the Pac-12 for a long time. How typical are, are Utah, are USC's top wideouts this year with what they've generally put out there? Oh, great talent, and um, they're big, big playmakers, and so, uh, and then they're just across the board. They, they're, they're all great weapons. Uh, when you're playing against certain teams, sometimes you can look at one or two guys that you can, that you can kind of highlight as, as the go-to guys. But they have, you can see they spread the ball out pretty well and. Um, you know we're gonna have to be ready on, on all on all on maybe all fronts in our, in our coverage with with handling the pass game. Bonds, St. Brown, and Pittman all with double digit catches through two games. Uh, USC's defense uh, pretty good in the red zone, uh, okay against the run and better against the pass. A thought or two about what your offense has to get done on on Saturday. Yeah, it's another challenge for us, and they did they did a great job uh, basically handling a Stanford offense that that uh, could be explosive. So. Uh, they, they rely on a lot of, uh, you know, uh, physical, physicality up front with the D line, and then a great bunch, a uh, bunch of athletes that can run. And then, uh, so we'll, we'll have to be good and take care of the football. But I think uh, we we got some things and some weapons that we can count on as well. It is their first road game too. They've they've had their first two games at home. They're coming now into your place, uh, some altitude, some heat, and hopefully a big big crowd on hand as well. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. You know, afternoon game and kind of like it's a vintage old school BYU game. So it's gonna be nice and. 
uh, looking forward to the, this opportunity for our team. How about the coaching staff uh, connections between uh, BYU and USC? Any there? Yeah, a lot of them. I mean, I'm friends with uh, pretty much all the guys on their staff, you know, and, and so uh, Chad Kahaha is a D-line coach. It worked for me when I coordinated, and I know Johnny Nansen and Graham Harrell, and there's some great coaches there. Baxter, he's a, a son-in-law of, of McBride, and so um, there's a lot of great connections, and they have a, a really good coaching staff, and uh, they'll have their guys ready, and I think uh, we have a great coaching staff ourselves, so we'll, it's going to be a fun game. I'm looking forward to it, and, and uh, I'm glad that we have it at home. Uh, fun side note here. They won't be on the field together, uh, but both teams will field a Zach Wilson. Uh, BYU's got a quarterback, and uh, USC's got a wide receiver, both with the same names and spelling. Again, they won't see each other on the field at the same time. But uh, it's not, not every game this happens, and so we're going to just make note of that and, uh, and let you know that uh, you won't be confused by any stretch as to which Zach Wilson belongs to, uh, to BYU. But it's a similarity. We'll get a so. picture afterwards. Yeah. <laughs> ho- ho- hopefully, uh, hopefully our guys still got the bigger smile. That'd be great. Yeah. Uh, All right, we're heading to break after segment two. We want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, uh, kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the Residence Inn Marriott in Provo. Mondays at 1 o'clock Eastern, 10 Pacific, we talk BYU football with the coordinators on the Coordinator's Corner with Jeff Grimes, Eli Satuiaki, and Ed Lamb. That's Mondays 1 Eastern on BYU TV. After this short timeout, the coach takes your questions in studio and from fans on social media. BYU football with Kalani Sitake. We are giving away a signed BYU football helmet from the coach this Saturday on a countdown to kickoff, which begins at 2.30 Eastern on BYU TV. To enter, go to the BYU TV Sports, BYU Sports Nation, or BYU TV Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter accounts about how to enter to win this signed BYU helmet. In fact, Kalani... Let's just do it right now. All right. We've got, we've got a helmet. We've got a Sharpie. It's a nice-looking helmet, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now it's ruined. Somebody will win this signed helmet. All right. All right. Thank you, Coach. It's ruined now. <laughs> it's got some value to it now. All right. Uh, this Saturday, hashtag Go Cougs, meeting up with the hashtag Fight On. It is BYU and USC at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. And the BYU players are fired up to welcome one of the biggest names in the game, into Provo. Oh, it's a huge opportunity. I mean, growing up, and they were the powerhouse of college football, you know, so I can't wait to play them. It's, it's amazing. Uh, it's one of those uh, teams that you dream about growing up, playing against, and uh, just say, oh, like, rag years to come. Oh, yeah, we played USC at home, and uh, it was a exciting, fun game, and uh, I just I just can't wait for that game. It's going to be a fun one. You know, I, I, I really think that's going to be a big opportunity for us, playing a great team like them. But, you know, at home with our fans and all, and all that energy, I think it's going to be a really great game. We want to play against the best because we want to be the best. So I love that we're playing against those guys in our house. Yeah, no, I mean, it's cool to, to have those guys coming down here to us. I know we're going to have a big fan base there and have a lot of support. And, you know, again, again, part of the schedule of the team I don't think we should lose to. I mean, it's, it's again, it, a team thing. I think guys need to have that mentality that, hey, I've watched USC on TV since I was a little kid of them being the best of the best, but now this is our opportunity. I think we can can beat those guys. Oh, it's big time. You know, we just want to show up for the fans, you know what I mean, and, uh, you know, have a a great game for the fans uh, first off, but it's a different feeling when you beat a team like that, you know, at home, then you look to the home crowd and everybody's cheering you on and stuff like that. So it, it it means a lot to have a big team like that come here. It's huge. You know, every home game you can get is great, but, you know, a team of a high caliber with, you know, a lot of good experience and, you know, does well, it's, it's even, you know, bigger for us to have them in our own home stadium. They're loaded with NFL guys that'll be playing, so it's an awesome opportunity to go and get experience against those type of guys and, and show them what we can do, show them that we have guys that are just as talented. And uh, they're coming here to Provo, so they'll see what it's like in, in BYU Stadium. I think it's a great opportunity, you know, getting a, getting a team of that prestige uh, coming here to Provo. Um, you know, you just want to show them a good time. All right. Good time is a winning time, for yeah. sure. Yeah, good stuff. Uh, one of the best parts of our weekly show with Coach Satake is when we let you ask the questions. We've got uh, live audience and social media questions ready to roll. Let's start here in the studio, and let's uh, bring up to the mic Charlie Anderson. Hello, Charlie. Hi. Go ahead with the coach. Um, where did you learn your dance moves? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I, I try to think I'm, like, up. You know, up to date with my dance moves, but my kids always, 
critique my dances and tell me what I need to do better and then what I probably shouldn't try to do. Right, Sky? Yeah, my daughters are the main ones. Good question. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Oh man, that's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, kids. <laughs> Thanks, Charlie. Good question. Um, <laughs> we're going to stick with the musical theme, I guess, almost here. Uh, at Dallin okay. Hickson on Twitter says, What song would you choose as the walkout song for your team at Lavelle Edwards Stadium if you had one? I like the Imagine Dragons song, so any of those would be nice. Anything from them? Yeah. We'll let I them like know. Them. Okay. Uh, is it Eliza? Eliza Falau? Yeah, Eliza Falau. Okay, you're um, next. My question is, having studied at BYU, I'm studying English. I was wondering what your favorite book is. My favorite book? Okay, so I like H.G. Wells stuff. So Time Machine is really good. This is a little different, you know, but um, I don't know. That's a hard one. That's like asking me which one of my kids is my favorite. <laughs> so I, I like a lot of different books, um, short stories, stuff like that. Probably go to the scriptures if you have to. <laughs> that's an easy answer, right? You say scriptures, but yeah, I, I would like. I, I think I like that. That's that's. Uh, I don't know. That's that's probably what something that came to mind first. Okay, thanks. You read it? Oh, what the H. Have you read the, yeah, the time time machine. One? I'm, yeah, I'm familiar with it. Yeah, yeah that's good. Try it. It's a little different, but. So, uh, which question. one of your kids is your favorite? No, English. Uh, we have a lot of English majors on our on our staff, by the way. So I think uh, Ed and, and Elisa Tuyaki, they're both English. and So, yeah, that's, they breed good coaches, I guess, in the English department. <laughs> At Critch Sam on the Twitter says, outside of Lavelle Edwards Stadium, uh, what's been your favorite stadium or atmosphere uh, to play in or coach in? Oh, man, I, I like them all. But I, I think um, you look at the, like the, the sites. I've mentioned it before, the NFL ones are the ones that, that's kind of mine. I, I like going to the place where an NFL team plays, you know. I think well, the one that I liked a lot was playing at uh, University of Phoenix Stadium in, in Arizona. When we played Arizona in 2016, that was a lot of fun. It was cool to play on grass indoors because it was super hot outside and air-conditioned inside, so it was nice. How did Neyland Stadium stack up in terms of a venue and an oh, atmosphere? Oh, that was cool, too. The checkered, the checkered um, end zones. I mean, that's just stuff that you grew up watching, and then the orange and, um, you know, everyone's singing Rocky Top Tennessee and, I mean, we were all singing it too. It was just uh, it's such a catchy tune and everything. So uh, it just it was a really cool experience for all our players and for me as a coach. It's really cool to see it. Okay, uh, Colleen Harker, next up at the mic. Hi, Colleen. Hi. Um, how much do you attribute your win to the prayers of Zach Wilson's mom? <laughs> oh gosh. I don't know, but I'm the guy that said that we won a national championship when I was nine years old, praying every every week for wins. And so, um, yeah, there's. I think it's the appropriate thing to pray for. <laughs> <laughs> At uh, Drew Weidman on Twitter uh, asks, have your headphones been repaired after you threw them to the ground at the end of the game? Yeah. I hope so. Uh, so if you, find out this weekend. Yeah, if you see me with like a Britney Spears type of microphone, then I guess <laughs> that's their way of telling me to take care of the, the headset. No, I shouldn't have done that. I felt bad. and I was just trying to throw it somewhere that didn't hit anyone, but it might have hit somebody. I don't, I'm not sure, but... I'm sorry. Things happen when you win and you get excited. <laughs> that, 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 you know, the emotions take over a little bit. Yeah, right yeah, yeah. Just It's something that I regret. <laughs> I regret stepping and spraining my ankle, and I was really upset that I couldn't jump and celebrate as much as I wanted to okay. because of someone's headphones. It could have been my own. I don't know. <laughs> All right, uh, heading to break, we'll tell you that, hey, Thursday night, uh, it's number 12, Texas A&M playing Elise Flake and number 10, BYU Women's Soccer at Southfield. Kind of a game of the year type feel there. That'll be on BYU TV and BYU Radio at 9 Eastern and 6 Pacific. Coming up next, we hear how uh, running backs coach A.J. Stewart does his thing during practice. We visit with senior wide receiver Micah Simon here in Studio C. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake on BYU TV, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Cougars and the pros now take a look at what happened over the weekend, week one of the NFL. Fred Warner 
Almost double digits in tackles for the 49ers. Taysom Hill with his first regular season receiving touchdown came last night from Drew Brees. And uh, Kyle Van Noy had an excused absence from a Sunday night game. <laughs> he and his wife were giving, uh, they, had, they had their first uh, their first child. If he played, they wouldn't have scored any points because I think they held him to three. So if he would have played, it would have been zero. It would have been a goose egg. <laughs> but congratulations for having his son. I think, I, I like the name. It's Trey Legend. Yeah. That's a really cool name. L-E-D. Can't wait to see him play for us. It was kind of cool. The Patriots had their post-game locker room celebration. And as things are winding down, someone had to Belichick the phone and Kyle Van Noy was FaceTiming from the hospital and so he showed all the guys and it was pretty That's cool. That's cool. They yeah. have a really good culture there. Yeah. So anyway, good stuff for the guys. All right. Uh, each week we take you inside BYU's practices with an up-close look and listen to what goes down during game prep. Tonight we've got running backs coach A.J. Stewart mic'd up. Burn a lot. Let's go. Start. Yes, sir. Yep. I was just down, down, bad. Start that thing off, boy. Let's go. Let's go. Lord have mercy. That boy, eleven. Woo. I like the seek, though. That was nice. Good job seeing it. Putting the foot in the ground, getting vertical. That was beautiful. Ball security. Let's go. Gavin, get your butt going. Let's go. Two hops. Two hops. Eyes up. Eyes up. Good. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Tight ends. Quarterbacks. Let's go. The biggest thing, just just be focused, man, and just let's settle down a little bit. There we go. There we go, Hey, Good job, Hank. Hey. hey, good catch, big dog. All right, we'll do some dancing lessons probably on one of our off days. Yeah, go for it. We'll get you some dancing lessons. Let's go, E. Let's go, E. Let's go, e. Good job, baby. Hey. Good job, good job. Feeling good? What's up, Coach E? You need some? Huh? Just come holler at us? Oh, yeah, yeah, man. Okay. How y'all doing? You always welcome, Coach E. Oh, yeah. All right, can y'all. You always welcome with us, Coach E. Hey, man. Let's go. Good run. Good job, boy. Yes, sir. Let's go, baby. You're going to make mistakes, make them at 100 miles per hour. Okay? I like what I'm seeing, though. Y'all doing a good job. Ah, go eat. What's up, Keanu? woo Good catch, boy. Hey, good catch, man. Good job, boy. Let's go eat. Easy money. Good work, boy. Hey, good job, baby. That's how you run that thing, boy. Good job. Meeting's gonna be hard. Practice's gonna be hard. Treatment's gonna be hard. Getting sleep's gonna be hard. All of it. But it's gonna pay off, man. We're gonna be freaking throwing water around and celebrating in that locker room. That's gonna be the best feeling you've ever had. Backs on two. One, two. Right. Good work. Good job. You guys were throwing some water around on Saturday night in Knoxville. It's pretty yeah, good. We were. Just keep doing it, man. How is it so, to have AJ in your room? Awesome. He does a great job at mentoring his young man and you know, they, they learn a lot because he keeps it, he keeps it light and, and uh, finds ways to connect with his players. And so I, I love the fact that he's, he gets the most out of his guys because they trust and love him. Okay. This past Saturday in Knoxville, uh, BYU was down three, deep in its own territory, under a minute to go, and the Cougars needed a play. They got one from our next guest. 50 yards away from field goal territory. A step up by Wilson. Deep man is open. It's caught by Simon. Oh, yeah, He's playing the 40, the Come 35, back, 30, baby. 25, 20, 50. You got to hustle. You- Please welcome in senior <laughs> wide receiver Micah Simon. How are you doing? Good to see you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a fun few days, hasn't it? Yeah, it sure has. <laughs> <laughs> this is not your first time on this show. You've been here a few times now, it feels like. And, uh, but it is slowly but surely, I guess, coming to an end. We may not see you again. Uh, this is your senior year. How does it feel to be at your fifth year and your last year as a Coug here? It feels great to be here. Um, you know, enjoy my time here. You know, really didn't know if I'd be here, you know, four or five years, but I worked out. I was able to redshirt when, when Coach came, helped me develop as a player. Um, you know, help me stay on track with school. You know, I'm a graduate, so taking taking classes now in my fifth year. So it just kind of all worked out for the best. So you just said a second ago that you didn't know if you'd be here all four or five years. Take us back then to maybe when you maybe didn't think that you'd be a lifetime Cougar. 
Uh, I didn't really mean it like that. I think I meant it more like, <laughs> just meant it more like, you know, if I was going to be here, just if I was going to redshirt or not, since I didn't redshirt my freshman season. And, uh, you know, I really didn't know people could redshirt their sophomore year, like halfway through, <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I, I, was, I was always going to be here. You know, I, I, I was supposed to be here. It's, it's been a great time. When you came into the program, uh, Kalani, as head coach, uh, what did you know about Micah and how soon did it take to, to learn about him, what you know now? Well, I just, I mean, I, I knew a lot about him and, and um, more importantly, I just saw the, what he could develop into as a person. I think, uh, you know, the leadership that he has and, and the, the potential that he has, I just saw so much of it, not just football. And I know we could develop him as a football player and take that year to really get his, his muscles and his strength and his speed up. But um, just giving him the opportunity to, to be a spokesperson. And, you know, he's not of this faith, but he does a great job representing BYU and, and promoting um, the brand. And, and uh, I think it's been a really, he's been really helpful for me as a head coach and helping the culture of our team and being a great leader. And then also promoting and, and encouraging others to lead at a young age. And so we have this great uh, dynamic and culture on our team. And, and a big part of it is Micah and his teammates and the things that he's been able to do as a, as a person to help that thrive. We saw the play again, and uh, you've talked about it a lot already. Um, can you describe it any differently than you've described it already a few, a few different times? I mean, not really, but, <laughs> you know, um, it's just one of those plays where it, it just worked kind of exactly how we needed it to at the time. Uh, just, yeah, you know, four, four verts and... Like I said, you know, a lot of times that, you know, Bushman is a great tight end and a lot of guys were, uh, were looking at him to, to stop him and I just got behind the defense and it just worked out the way. Receiver like yourself, uh, what's the thought process when you see the ball in the air? Catch it. <laughs> <laughs> pretty simple? Yeah, pretty simple. My eyes were super big and everybody was making fun of me, but uh, no, it's, it's all good. And the thing, it's a good point that uh, I think it was Coach Lamb might maybe talk to me about, uh, about the play with me and, and said, you know, if... And the guy's got, a, you know, there's a guy coming to you once you caught the ball. The guy maybe didn't take the best angle, but you could have been tackled right there. Ed said, you know, if he gets tackled there, well, now it's going to be dicey whether we can get up and actually get another playoff, get in the field goal position. The yak yards were huge. Of course, you're full sprinting at that point. You're just thinking run as fast as you can, right? Yeah, I, I thought I was going to score, but, <laughs> um, you know, I think the cutback just slowed me down a little bit. And uh, there there were guys coming, you know, full speed to, to stop me. But... I think it probably worked out for the best that I was able to just get tackled in, save time on the clock, and uh, get Jake out there to take us in overtime. You said your eyes got real big when that ball was in the air? Right about there? You was thinking it's coming to me? a lot there of big eyes on that play. <laughs> I, like, I like Coach's reaction. That's pretty good, too, so, isn't it? <laughs> I, I wish you guys could see on film, after I caught it, Coach was running like a 4-2-40 down the, <laughs> down the sideline. He, he, was, he was moving pretty fast. The will was too strong for my ankle to hold up. <laughs> I just wanted you to make that play. I was trying to get us to spike it, right? But I, I was really pleased that you had great ball security. That's I, the thing, too. I, I bragged about it after. I mean, you, you bring a second arm in. The last thing you want is to have it punched out, right? I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we preach ball security all the time. Um, the staff, co uh, coach, that's, that's all he cares about. You know, take care of the ball. You have a great chance to win games. So ball security drills every day, and that's something we always harp on. You had enough time to clock it, and then uh, when Jake came out, it feels like everyone kind of figured we're okay here. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that's what Jake does. He just makes he just makes kicks. Yeah, all I have all faith and confidence in Jake. I people were like, oh, I can't watch. I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch up close. Like, <laughs> so I, I want to be ready when it goes in to go celebrate with them and get ready for overtime. Uh, it, again, it just tied the game, but then the good things happened in OT as well. But uh, people you, use the phrase uh, career night, and. Uh, it was that for you, uh, because every number, uh, whether it's seven catches or 127 yards or the 64 yards on that one grab, those are all career highs for you. And I guess, Mike, it might be what any senior wants is to get to his last year and have it maybe ideally be his best year. And so far, it's kind of started out that way for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people kind of over the offseason and just doing different interviews here and there. And, you know, a lot of the same question I was getting was, you know, how do you want to be remembered or what do you want to do for your last season? And, you know, you know, I was just being completely honest was just I wanted to be a consistent, reliable receiver, somebody that the quarterbacks can trust, that my teammates can trust and the coaches can trust to just, yeah, they can call my, you know, call a play for me and I'll go make the play. You know, I wasn't into yards, catches, touchdowns, things like that. Just, you know, be a reliable receiver and just help the team win games any way, any way uh, I can. You know, I've been doing a lot more 
this season on special teams as well. Just trying to be the best, uh, be the best player and teammate I can be. Do you also want to be, want to be remembered as a great locker room dancer? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. And uh, to be honest, this was not my best performance. <laughs> I, I was a little thrown off by the music. I, if I could have picked my own song, I would have. Uh, now, coach, uh, coach, coach was getting it. <laughs> Stop showing it, man. This is, this is embarrassing for my kids. I'm okay with it because I got this move right there. I missed it. <laughs> Uh, I, I've been noting this a little bit on Twitter, just how, how much you've been a target this year, uh, especially on third downs. Uh, you already have four third down conversions here in just two games. Um, everyone wants to be considered, I guess, a go-to guy. Not that it's about an individual thing, but uh, is, that, is that important to you that a coach or that a quarterback can have trust in you when, when the play's needed to go out and make it? Yeah, for sure. And uh, I kind of talked about this just uh, with people today was that you know, I, it's it's kind of unique in our offense, just being no huddle, and we just play sides. We don't really kind of play X, Z, and things like that. So it can be anybody at any point. So you know, kind of this game, it just kind of fell in my hands, where I was just at the right right spot at the right time. The defense gave a right look, and you know, it, it could have been any one of our receivers that you know had to had the night I had. And uh, I mean, I'm excited for them this week. Kalani, something has been pretty consistent in talking about Micah's play this past week was how genuinely happy everyone is for him because of who he is and what they feel for him personally. You know what I'm talking about? Of course. And, and uh, it just made sense for everyone. Just, we're so, so happy for Micah. And, you know, we got, we're really close, myself and, and Micah. We've been growing that way. And, and I know he's excited to be a senior, but I'm, I'm sad to see the senior group leave, you know, and, and uh, not to get emotional or anything, but to my boys, you know. And so I'm, I'm really thankful for him and, things that he's sacrificed, things that he's done for this team and for this program and the school. And, and uh, he's going to have great success in life. And he's done his, his service and charity work that he's done has been amazing as well. He's changed a lot of lives since he's been here at BYU. You know what? You're both wearing, we haven't referenced them, but you're both wearing T-shirts uh, that have a lot to do with what you just talked about. Uh, maybe you could explain yours and, and, and yours. Yeah, More to Life is our foundation that funds a lot of the, the, the um, it's a nonprofit organization that funds a lot of our, uh, charity work and service work that we do for our players on the team and uh, emphasis on two that it takes two to make a team and um, uh, we're trying to do whatever we can to create a lot of teams out there and have success and we do a lot of work Mike you can probably explain that one there yeah there. Um, so mine is uh, Sojourner True School um, it's a middle school out in Harlem and uh, I think I've kind of touched on this before was that the reason we do the trip to Harlem each year is because of uh, Lavelle Everts and Patty and uh, the mission they served out there. So we just uh, wanted to partner with the school and kind of really try to make a difference. So I ended up partnering with Sojourner Truth. And uh, I love, you know, repping these guys, you know, any chance I get. You know, I wore a Defend Harlem shirt yesterday. You know, I wore this today. And uh, it's just great to um, be able to connect with those people, um, you know, on a, on a deeper level. You know, we have a mentorship program that we that we do and talk to those kids once a week. And uh, it's just it's something I wish, pe- you know, people could really see. And some great things have happened at that school, right? Yeah, for sure. They've they've killed it on their on their test scores going up, you know, 200 percent in, in math reading. And uh, they've just kind of really grown closer together at, a, at that school and have have learned to, to enjoy it there and to be proud of where they're from. Pretty cool connection from uh, out in Harlem to out here in Utah and how it all comes together. It's great work. Uh, thoughts on USC Saturday? Great team. Um, you know, ranked team coming into Provo. We're, we're super excited for this opportunity that we have. Um, you know, we're, we're getting ready. We're pre- preparing hard, training hard. And uh, I'm excited to, to go out in front of Cougar Nation and, uh, you know, show what we can do. As high as everything was and as happy as everything was in Knoxville, uh, to bring it back and realize that it's all about consistency now and, and, and no letdowns and all those kinds of things, how important has that been for the team this week in terms of getting your minds right for, for the next challenge? It's been great. You know, we, we knew we would enjoy the win this weekend, and then even on Monday just going over film review and enjoying the, enjoying the highs and learning from the lows. But then, you know, after Monday's meetings and heading to practice, it was, it was straight to USC, and it was, it was straight business after that. You know, you uh, it's probably the last time I talk about Tennessee, uh, and uh, you know that's that's how that's how our, our entire team's mentality is and focus is just to get ready for this next game. And Kalani, how important has Mike been into uh, been in terms of setting that mindset for the group? Oh, he's huge, and and 
you know, he's been a great example for us, and I call on him quite a bit. And he's always telling me to call on the other guys on the team. And yeah. uh, but it's 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 something that I know I can always rely on. He talked about being a reliable receiver. He's a reliable player that we can count on uh, to help um, do everything. If, if it means helping a young man and and people out in Harlem, he's going to take the, the the lead on that. And if it means helping mentor someone and, and tutor someone in a class, he's going to do that too. So he's he's all about helping others and. That's what BYU is all about, the things that we would accomplish as a school and as, as members of the church and things that we can do as a team. Uh, there's a bigger purpose here at BYU, and it's more than just football. Okay, last thing for you. Uh, you said you're a graduate. Uh, what did you get your degree in, and what's next for you after this season? I uh, graduated exercise science degree, and, uh, you know, after this season we'll, you know, try for the for the NFL, you know, uh, go train and see, see what I can do there. And then... Uh, you know, see if uh, see if coach has a spot for me. Maybe be a, be a be a <laughs> be a graduate no. graduate assistant back here, and uh, you know, work towards my master's, and then uh, kind of go from there. You got a spot? <laughs> Man, just go try to be Fred Warner's teammate on my Niners, and then we'll we'll talk about it afterwards. But he's already got his degree in hand, and I'm just uh, you know he's going to be great no matter what he decides to do. If he, he'll be a great coach, so. Uh, but I want him to maximize all his potential as a player first, and then he's always going to – you might see him back here again. Well, we hope you have a great rest of this season, then you get whatever you want after, and if you end up sticking around or coming back, we'd love to have you around. It's been awesome getting to know you over the years. Appreciate it, Greg. Appreciate it. All right, it. thanks a lot. That's Micah Simon, folks. <laughs> Micah Simon, great job. <laughs> all right, Cougar fans, you can break down BYU football with Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, Brian Logan, and David Nixon each week on After Further Review. Tuesdays at 7 Eastern, 4 Pacific on the BYU TV app, and Wednesdays at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. As we go to break, trivia question. Which former BYU quarterback was once a, BYU, was a baseball player for the USC Trojans? We'll tell you after this. Saturday game day coverage on BYU Radio, starting with Cougar pregame live at 1.30 Eastern, 10.30 a.m. Pacific. BYU TV's countdown to kickoff is one hour later with the game on ABC and BYU Radio. And we have postgame coverage on BYU TV and BYU Radio afterward. Fans, if you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, we ask you to try Smith's Click List where you order online. Then you pick up curbside by the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. Well, Kalani, whether it's uh, coming off a big win or a disappointing loss, I know probably what you want most out of your guys is just, uh, it's a, you know, consistency. So the highs aren't too high, lows aren't too low, but you can get a, a good thing rolling here. Exactly. And then we talked about um, our opportunity to learn every week. And, you know, there's that old saying that you win or learn. And here at BYU, you win and learn. So that's what we got to focus on. So uh, now that we've won the game, we can't, you know, we have to be able to, we can't just pat ourselves on the back and be happy with it. I think uh, these guys are hungry to get more, and the preparation that they've done so far this week has shown that. And You heard Micah just wants to get the Tennessee game out of the way so you can move on to, to SC the entire time, and that's what we're going to try to do and get it done this Saturday. You've shown that you can beat P5 teams. It happens every year. Uh, at ranked teams. Uh, you beat a ranked team last year in, uh, in Wisconsin, and you've got chances to do that again this year. Uh, whether it's this week against USC, uh, Washington still ranked, Boise is ranked, so there are opportunities that are going to come uh, from here on out. Even definitely, we feel good about the depth on our team and that the that we're we're mostly healthy. You know, so I think that plays into it, and, and we're able to use a lot of different bodies that are. But it shows a lot of preparation our players did in the off season, getting ready for the schedule, and uh, looking forward to this matchup. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, the afternoon kicks, 1.30 this week, 1.30 against Washington at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. That's got to get you fired Let's up. keep the theme going. That would be nice, especially in November. The 1.30 kickoffs would be really nice. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be fun, man. It doesn't matter what time it is. I know Lavelle Edwards Stadium will be rocking, and we'll have the, the Rowdy Rowdy Rock and our, and our fan base just going crazy for us. So it'll be a lot of fun on Saturday. And you've got another, another game in the Cougar Canyon, the, the, the new Cougar Walk on the other side of the stadium for folks that we used to, used to go the other way. Come this way now, right? Yep. And a lot of food, and I wish I could stop by and dance and listen to music and eat the food, but maybe afterwards they can keep it open. We hope it's, uh, we hope it's that kind of day for you on Saturday. Kalani, good to see you again, and good luck on the weekend. Thanks, Greg. Go Cougs. All right, go Cougs. All right, for the next week's show, go to BYU.
BYUcougars.com slash Satake Show. We'll talk to you next Tuesday at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Mountain. For David Holiday, Jerem Jordan, Micah, the Kalani, I'm Greg. See you so long. Go Cougs!